So guys, you know me. I always buy every Nintendo game because I talk about it on the podcast and Endless Ocean Luminous was absolutely no different. I picked this game up at GameStop yesterday. They had a lot. They had like four, which is not a lot. Sorry, four is not a lot. But compared to like on Pikmin 1 plus 2 launch day, they had zero, right? For I think for the uh, another Code rec- Recollection game, they had two. So four for GameStop is a lot. They had four Endless Ocean Luminous copies. I did pre-order though. And I have played this game on launch day for four to five hours. Let's go ahead. Let's dive into my thoughts. Is this game worth it? What do I think? And what even is the game? If, 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 you, if you have no idea what the game is, what even is it? Let's dive in. So what is Endless Ocean Luminous? Well, this is a brand new game and this series has been around for a while. Endless Ocean began on the Wii. I believe that that the first game released in 2007 on the Wii, and it has kind of been a niche series. So before this game was announced, you might have never heard of it. It's got a very niche fan base. It's not this well-known, you know, Nintendo game type thing. It's got its fan base, and that's it. And so this this game was announced during the... February 21st, 2024, Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase as the ending announcement, so so the final big announcement, and its core fan base got hyped. Now, that's the history. The game, essentially, to make it as simple as possible for you, because I don't want to dive into like 20 different things and like have you all confused, essentially the game is... You're a scuba diver type thing in a large ocean, as it is, endless ocean, and you're diving and scanning different fish and creatures around you. That's the game. As simple or as bare bones as it might sound, that is the game, and I'm not forgetting anything. I will dive into detail in a second, but that's what it is. For the most part, you're, you're, you know, you're swimming around deep in the ocean. You can explore caves, explore different areas of the the gigantic map. Each time that you go for a dive, the map is different. So it's so awesome. Like you just find new things every single time. Obviously like some of the same structures are built into the different map every time, but it's like a brand new experience. You can dive, as I said, into caves and things and find fish that you've never seen. It's very cool. And just based on that, you might think, okay, Max, I'm not going to buy the game. I'm not buying it. That's all I do. Is that it? There's a little bit more to it. So there are three main modes in the game. You can go for a solo dive, which is just, you know, single player dive and looking for fish. You can go for an, for a shared dive, which is you can dive with players online up to 30 people online, which I will dive into that. I don't love it, and I'll tell you why. And there is a story mode. Let's dive into, so I told you what single player is. Essentially, you're diving, you're seeing fish. There is like treasure on the ground that you know you, you can find as well, but that's kind of the gist of it. You're just swimming around looking for things. The shared dive mode is great. It's so awesome, okay? But Max, you just said that you don't like it. Why is that? So it's great. I played yesterday on, uh, what am I, where am I going with that? I was watching Nintendox stream and I was, he was streaming uh, Endless Ocean Luminous and I joined in and I did a shared dive with him and his, and you know, you know, everyone in his stream. And the shared dive mode is very fun. Essentially same game and you're, you know, you're diving with friends and the online runs great. My problem with it, is you have to know people to play online with them. You cannot, to my understanding, get into a game, get into a shared diving mode, and have random people join you. So when you get into a shared dive, it gives you a code. You have to give that code to people before they join your dive. People can't just join in randomly. And they kind of can, because... I was playing last night 
and I had I was in a shared dive, and I gave it out to my Discord. No one joined. No one joined, which is fine, right? No one even bought the game, so it's fine. But these two like Japanese names joined, and I don't think they were real people, because how would they have my code? Plus, they just looked like bots too, like they were like swimming around, like looking like bots, right? So, I don't think those were those were real people. I don't think so. How would they have my code? Because I don't think they were from my Discord. They would they they would like they would have swam near me. They were just off doing their own thing. I don't think that that was anybody. So how am I supposed to play with thirty people? I don't have thirty friends, let alone. 30 friends that have the game, right? Like, so I don't have that. If I streamed it, I probably I probably still wouldn't even fill up that 30 people mark. So my biggest thing is like, why can't you play with people that you don't know? Like, join a room, you know? Like, so if someone creates a room and I hit join a room, I should be able to see a bunch of rooms that people are playing in right now instead of having to get the actual code from someone. The code thing ruins everything. Because if you don't know people, no one knows your code and no one can join you. I don't like that. Now, that's fine. If you have friends, great. Let's talk about story mode. Story mode, I have not gotten to the end to. I have not done a, a whole too much in there. But what I can say and what I have read online is that the story mode, and I can back this up from what I've played, the story mode just feels like one giant tutorial. It's just like... For the first chapter, it is a tutorial. It's, here's how to do this. You can do this. This is how you do that, right? That is actually a tutorial. And another thing that I don't like is that in the story mode, for example, let's give you this example. I did not like this whatsoever, okay? I was swimming in the story mode. It said, scan this fish. I did it. And then a, a cutscene plays where the AI person who is like in my headset, like talking to me, giving me guidance in the, in the in the story mode, is saying, "Watch out! There's sharks!" And it shows the sharks, and they look ferocious. And I swear to you, intense music began to play. Guess what happened? It makes you think something big is about to happen. Oh, we have to swim away for our life from these sharks, right? The sharks just swam away. The sharks swam away. When you made this seem like a big intense moment that I have to swim for my life in the game to escape these sharks, it just ends anticlimactically and they just go away. Like it makes you think something is gonna happen and that's not a big deal, right? But it happened multiple times where these intense moments were just cutscenes. They were just, it was like, there was some other similar situation where I was like, oh boy, I have to do that. And it did it for me in a cutscene. I didn't like that at all. I, I, I didn't like that. So, you know, those are my nitpicks. Apart from that though, the game's great. So I said that I played four to five hours. For reference, when Princess Peach Showtime came out, the last, you know, major Nintendo game that, that came out, I played two hours on launch day. So you can kind of tell this one got me hooked a little bit, and it did. Now, although diving is pretty much the only thing to do, you know, diving and scanning fish, it's not like that's not fun. There are 500, I think 578 fish, different fish to scan. Not to mention, on May 10th, there is an in-game event where everyone gets together and you can find rare fish stuff like that you can unlock customization for your character and change your character's clothing color and add stickers to your character and you can do emotes in the game like backflip uh what is there you if you have a friend that sounds bad if you have a friend that has endless ocean luminous you can like do partner emotes like form a heart so one person will form half a heart the other person that you know you're playing with will form the other half you can do like partner emotes like that you can do all kinds of cool stuff, clap emotes. It's like Fortnite stuff, right? Uh, no dances or anything, but it's like cool stuff like that, right? You can unlock emotes. You can, there's one more thing that you can unlock, right? Uh, I'm missing it, but did I, did I write it on my notes? 
No, I didn't. But those cost in-game coins. So the customization is great. And that's really all there is to it. I will say that in terms of customization, things are freaking expensive, okay? Things are really expensive. If you want to buy an emote, there are some emotes that cost, I think one cost, like the most expensive, is 120,000 coins. And it's not easy to get that many coins. It's, it's really not. You have to dive. That's probably at least... 10 hours of playtime, which is great. That's, you know, a, a, a rewarding thing, right? But for this kind of lack of content, are we really going to play 10 hours just, just for one emote? You know, I, I don't know, right? I can easily see myself sinking 100 hours into the game before I die, like over like, over like the course of six years or so. Um, but I don't know I will be spending... 10 hours of my time on one emote. And I think it wasn't even cool. It was like a play dead emote or it was something like that, right? So it's all right. Will I be going back to play Endless Ocean Luminous? 100%. The game is relaxing. It's peaceful. It's calm. It's a nice way to wind down. People were upset because there was no combat. Uh, listen, I don't know what you expected. And there's people saying... It's a worse, uh, what's it, Subnautica? I've never played Subnautica, but I don't think, and not trying to, I'm not trying to like shill this game, I don't think that we should be comparing it to Subnautica. They're two different games. One is to, you know, relax you and wind you down and show you this entire cool sea. The other one, I've never played, but I would assume is a little bit different, right? So, I'm having a great time with Endless Ocean Luminous. However... I believe myself to be on the niche fan base side of things. So I'm going to say a lot of good things about this game. If you buy this game and you pay 50 bucks for it, I can't say you will be the happiest. There's not a whole ton of content in the game. For the people who like that stuff, like me, like Talk, who was streaming it, you know, you like it. You enjoy the game a lot more you think is it's worth that price tag for your for the average joe and maybe the average listener of mine i appreciate you i don't know this is worth it for you i would say probably don't buy it however if you have a lot of interest i would then say buy it because i feel like if you're even just at all interested this could be a game for you because a lot of people like those relaxing games, those cozy games, those calm games, right? A lot of people like that stuff. So if you're cool with, you know, just, the, you know, the whole diving thing, you aren't looking for a plethora of content in the game, this could be it for you. I will tell you, I love this game. I'm going back to it. If you have me friended on Switch, you'll see me playing Endless Ocean Luminous. Maybe not soon, but like eventually. It's, it's, it's a fun game for me man i just don't know if you can charge 50 bucks for it. a better price for it would have been 30 bucks i would say at that price buy it because it gives you enough content for 30 bucks but for 50 it's rather steep i would say skip for the average person i'd say skip it because as much as i can recommend it as much as i love it the average person who plays mario odyssey mario kart might not like this so skip is what i say but if you have any interest, then I'd say buy. My official rating for the game after four to five hours of gameplay, four to five hours, after that kind of time, four or five hours, you can really experience pretty much everything, right? You know, you haven't scanned every single fish, but like, you know what the game is all about. After that time, I can give this game, for me personally, an eight out of 10. But, the, but I can totally understand why people gave this a 5 out of 10, a 6 out of 10. I see it both sides. My side is I like the game. I like this kind of game. And I knew what to expect. So I say 8, eight out of 10. It met my, expe my expectations, even though it was kind of pricey. For the average Joe, yeah, you will probably give the game a 5 or 6 out of 10. So... That is my first impressions on Endless Ocean Luminous. Let me know in the comments if you're 
on a platform that can comment. If you are picking up this game, maybe I think I can do a poll on Spotify. Are you picking it up? Yes or no? I think I can do that. I think I can. If I can do that, I'll do it. If I can't, I can't. Okay. But let me know. Or, you know, DM me on Twitter if you love this game. Be like, yo, Max, I've been playing Endless Ocean. I've been loving it. Let me know. I want to hear your thoughts. So let me know. 